Okay, so that's the situation you find yourself in. So however long it takes you to, for you to copy these things over, you can do it. Now, I'm going to do something that's unusual. And, uh, and while it's doing its thing, which actually doesn't take as long as it does in Windows, um, and uh, I'm not saying that to be a jerk. I'm just the way it. That's just the way it is. Um, discuss some other issues involved. And one is is, is how are you gonna how you how are you gonna mount your Windows directories? And uh, I guess I'll just do a quick thing on mounting. I, I did another video, but I don't know if I'm ever gonna find it or put it up. Basically, in Linux, you don't have or any kind of Unix system, really, or a lot of other operating systems, you're not going to have uh, drives that are labeled as being a C drive or a D drive or, or what have you. You just basically have a file structure. Here is represented by a disk. Usually that, that is represented um, in a more uh, proper parlance would be a forward slash home, so that's the home directory, and within the home directory is, is the jack folder. I don't like the way GNOME does this. I'm really, I'm resting up here and it's showing where I was before, and I'd rather just display where I'm at, but it likes to hold on to the last place you've been, I guess, to let you know where you've come from. Now, usually the user subdirectories are in home. There's jack. You would have your .cx office, that means, and .cx means a hidden file, so you go view, show hidden files, oh, there it is, okay. You have the same type of phenomenon in Windows, and usually the files that you don't want to um, edit or ruin or, <laughs> or or change accidentally or end up in the hidden files uh, subdirectories. Okay, to mount something, you have to pick a place as to where you want it, want the files from either a server or an additional hard disk to land within the directory structure that you have. And you also have to keep in mind the permissions that the, that the individuals who are going to access these files have when they go into them. Now, in Windows you may be familiar with uh, an administrator account. But a lot of the time, or at least in the older versions of Windows, and I, I, I'm not, by no means I'm going to call myself an expert at Windows, but, you know, you could probably, as the regular user, edit a file that is in the administrator's direct directory, even if the administrator created that file to start with. Well, in Unix and Linux, files, when the, when the system's first set up, you, you set up users, but there's one user that is always present it's called the root user, and actually his home directory is not in home, but it is in the root directory. You see there's an X there telling me that I can't go into it. And there's one common problem uh, that takes place when you're, you have to be careful about when you're administrating any kind of Unix or Linux uh, kind of desktop is called you know, <laughs> the permissions problem. Okay. If I decided to mount my... Um, uh, network shares in the root directory, but the user Jack, in all cases, at least in my office, is not allowed, doesn't have write, write privileges, read or write privileges in root, can't even enter the root directory, you're not going to be able to get to those files. Sometimes when applications run under a user's name, for example, these Wine applications are running um, with my permissions, the permissions that I have, I think, it, there may be a user called wine, but I think it would be actually me, and so if, if these, you know, if I had um, installed all these apps to root, and then just put a little uh, shortcut to root <laughs> on my desktop, so each of the users would be able to use this, I probably wouldn't be able to run the apps because I wouldn't have root privileges and the, and the files were owned by root. Getting back to mounting, so you have to pick a place and then you have to give the people that you want to access that subdirectory, you have to give them the permission to actually um, access the, the subdirectories. In my case, I chose to put it in the user's home directory, and this is another reason why you don't want to uh, deviate usernames if you're going to run a big business with a bunch of desktops, unless you're, you know, in this situation, you know, 
Unix is flexible. You can have it so everybody's logging into the server and they just see this as a thin client, but I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about people with desktops with files available on their local desktop. Um, I chose the mount point Morton and Associate, which kind of mirrors the name of my server, NetBIOS name of my server behind me, and then the two shares that are on the server. And you can see there are all the files in the Dell. Now I'll do a little magic and I'll explain how this thing works. Um, under here in Applications Accessories, there is a terminal. Now you have to be root to do this. Basically, you have to be root to mount any any kind of uh, a foreign file system in a system in, in, in Linux. Most of the time, by default. <laughs> It would be a very rare case it wouldn't, it wouldn't be that way, and someone would, would have had to gone in there and tweak the system to get it to work otherwise. Now, I'm going to use, I think it might even come up if I, is it? No. Okay, so i got to go here. So I, I created something, but I'm not going to get into it right now. So i go uh, start, uh, stop. I'm going to do a little magic here. Notice everything in the Dell directory is gone. Now, I don't like the way GNOME just kind of decides to go. It's, it's going to go back to the computer, and that's it. But those, you know, if I were to go back into the home folder and Morton Associates and Dell, there it is. It's blank. Now I'm going to start this little client that I created, and I'll show you how to do it, which was... Hair terror, there, there they are. They've just reappeared. So I've mounted the I've mounted my network share behind me from that computer to this mount point. The mount point is Jack Morton Associates Home Jack Morton Associates Dell, is, as illustrated here. Right? If I uh, change directories to uh, Morton, notice I only type MO, hit tab, completes the forming. Uh, Dell, where is it? Capital E, I gotta do that, yeah. Then this is the same thing as um, DIR, and there, there we go. Every, <laughs> everything that's on the server is there represented in a graphic form, you know, just, just so you can see it. Okay, now I've set that script, the script that mounts and unmounts the directory, I've set it up to run when the computer starts. But the thing is, is that if the computer doesn't have an IP number from the DHCP server, which uh, I was fine tearing my hair out earlier today trying to figure out why this wasn't working. Um, neither of the shares will mount, or maybe just one of them, if the, if the IP number wasn't assigned by the DHCP server quickly enough. So I'll stop here and get into that.